Okay, so picking up where we left off last time, the replication of the leading and lagging strands. Um, it's a highly coordinated event, and it happens at the replication fork, processed forward by the DNA helicase. Um, because of the size of the human DNA, synthesis takes place at more than one side at a time, so meaning the DNA is being synthesized and split apart and put back together in numerous places all at once. Um, what you'll often see is that you'll have one piece of DNA with many, many different replication forks going on all at the same time. Okay, so to get down in the dirty, little details of it. Um, on the leading strand, it's pretty simple, 5' prime to 3' prime as it binds down, uh, down towards the helicase. On the lagging strands, where we get a little bit more in-depth, we have a primosome, which is going along and priming the site for uh, the addition of the Okazaki fragments, uh, the primase, which is there specifically for those additions, and then what you see is it's uh, the primosome being the large complex of enzymes uh, it includes the primase. So it's a whole, it's a whole uh, complex, I guess you could say of parts put together there. So, And then you have the DNA polymerase 3 which acts on both the leading and lagging strands in accordance with the proper 5 prime and 3 prime direct and direction. However, that does leave gaps in the DNA on the lagging strand, which is where you'll see the DNA polymerase 1 go on and do its thing, followed by the DNA ligase which comes along and fills in the gaps of the uh, strand. Okay, so what you often see is that this uh, replication of linear DNA it, uh, it results in a loss of DNA each, each cycle of replication. And that's because uh, there are always gaps at the ends that can't be copied to the daughter strand because they have to be filled in by primers. Okay, uh, DNA telomerase. Since the RNA primer is excised, the DNA gets shorter by 25 to 200 um, base pairs each time the DNA is replicated. So, shorter telomeres, so basically what that means is that in older cells, uh, they have shorter telomeres and therefore it's, uh, it's, it's a result of cell aging. Uh, telomeres are hundreds of repeat units uh, of unique sequences at the 3' prime end of the DNA. Now, in adult cells, adult organism cells, they do not have functioning telomerase, um, as adults cannot have telomerase added uh, there. So, interestingly enough, similar to that, the cloned sheep Dolly had uh, shorter telomeres because she was cloned from a six-year-old sheep and therefore only lived six years. Now, that was a really major breakthrough because uh, it showed that the telomeres do play an important role in regards to cell and aging of the sheep. Now, the telomeres are generated by telomerase, um, which is a unique reverse transcriptase that carries out its own uh, RNA primer. It's generally expressed at high levels only in rapidly growing cells, so you'll often find the inappropriately high levels of telomerase in cancerous cells. Um, it's often a good target for drugs because it doesn't affect normal mature cells, and it can uh, prevent those otherwise uh, over duplicating cells from duplicating in the way that they are which is cancers. Um, there's uh, hella, hella cells, HeLa cells which are immortal cells and they actually don't have a shortening uh, effect in the coding region on those which have been used um, in tons of labs all over the world. Uh, sort of controversially because the woman's family did not give permission for her to her cells to be used that way. Um, which also brings us to the Hayflick limit, which is the maximum number of times that a cell can be divided before dying under normal circumstances, which is it's 50 times is the maximum times you'll see. Um, these are some people who won Nobel Prizes for the discovery of how chromosomes are protected by telomeres and enzymes. Telomerase. Okay, so let's go ahead and move right into uh, the recombination, which is the interchange of DNA modules, the utility and process of recombination. So let's get right into it. Okay, so genetic recombination between two different uh, 
can occur between two different uh, DNA or within the same molecule. Methods for, uh, there's a couple methods for adding and matching the DNA molecules. It's uh, catalyzed by recombinases at the holiday junctions, which is what you see circled here. Uh, those recombinase areas. Now what this causes is a cleavage of the DNA and creates new bond formations along bonds where they obviously didn't have them before. What you see is the holiday junctions forming. Uh, this allows for isomerization, which is a spatial rearrangement. They kind of flip and rotate a little bit and uh, create a better conformation. You'll notice that the strands here under, over, over, under, under, over, over, under, versus what was there before. And this eventually leads to a cleavage of the new, uh, newly recombined cells, which eventually comes to bond formation, and ta-da, you end up with two new genetically different uh, DNA cells after the fact. Okay, so that's pretty basic rundown of that. There's not a whole lot to talk about there. Um, DNA replication, recombination, and repair. So let's talk about repair, which is the fixing of incorrect or damaged bases. Um, there, the mutations that can occur, there's several types of mutations, several repair processes, and there's, uh, there's chemicals that cause mutations. So we're going to get into all of those topics here. Okay, so quick overview of the types of mutations that you're going to see, um, which cause changes in the DNA base sequence. There's uh, different types of mutations. You'll see substitution, which is the most common. You'll see insertions and deletions, which cause a frame shift which is an offset of the normal codon register, so everything moves over a little bit. Um, frame shifts can be very dangerous uh, to DNA. Um, consider the sentence below, the cow jumped over the moon. Now let's say you lose the W there. That means that the kaj umpido vert hem un, which really doesn't make much sense at all, unless you have your own language, in which case that would make perfect sense to you if that was your own language. Um, so this uh, frame shift mutation, which is the source of many cancers, um, like uh, for instance the 1,3 codon deletion causes cystic fibrosis. Um, there's a synonymous versus non-synonymous change, uh, which uh, versus non-synonymous. Um, no, uh, and the synonymous change results in no change in the amino acid. Non-synonymous does result in a change in the amino acid sequence. Um, the synonymous results in a change in nucleic acid sequence that has no amino acid change, meaning that you switch from one to another um, amino acid, but it still codes for the same thing. Um, now, missense mutation is another type of mutation that just means that the wrong amino acid would have been inserted. Um, and then a non-sense mutation is a premature stop codon, which can be caused by DNA slippage. Um, in the template, it causes a loss of pair. The new strand causes increases in pairs, so things like that. Okay, so causes of mutations. The tautomerization of the amino or enol forms that can form non-standard base pairs. So you see occasionally cytosine will bond with adenine here, which normally doesn't, it's A to T, C to G. Uh, the adenine amino tautomer can base pair with cytosine through these two linkages here, which it's not supposed to do under normal circumstances. Another uh, less common one you might see is the 5-bromouracil, which can bond with guanine, um, and it is even more likely to form enol than thymine and thus form mismatched bases along three different bonds. Um, and this actually creates sort of a, the double bond effect can actually uh, rotate between the two points between the O or the N. I completely forgot the name of that. Okay, so some additional cause of mutations is um, the addition of a nitrous acid to the, to an adenine can actually create a hypoxanthine with an oxygen here as opposed to a nitrogen, um, which can bond to cytosine. So you have A to C bonding instead of A to T bonding again, leading to bad hydrogen bonding and wrong base pairing. Um, now some compounds that can in, uh, intercalate or slip in between adjacent base pairs can cause insertion and deletion, uh, like aracidine, ar acridine, acridine, 
orange, you can't slip in between. Uh, it can happen, just, I don't really know the specifics of what it does or how it does it, but there it is. Um, additionally, there's more causes of mutation that we need to be aware of. There's uh, a detoxification enzyme that can convert some compounds to mutagens. So when the body attempts to remove bad substances from, the, from itself, occasionally it can have an adverse effect of its own, which can lead, well, for, for example, let's take a look at the uh, aflatoxin, aflatoxin B1. When it enters the body, uh, the cytochrome P450 will see it in an attempt to uh, break it down, but unfortunately, instead of breaking it down, um, it actually causes an oxy oxidation reaction, resulting in oxygen being bonded there um, on the end, which is up at the top, which actually makes it a more dangerous, more potent item than it had been previously, and it is an active DNA modifying agent, so definitely not something you want to deal with there. Um, now additionally, UV light can induce linkage of adjacent pyrimidine, pyrimidines, excuse me, in a DNA strand. Uh, the pyrimidine, creating pyrimidine dimers, um, can uh, bend the strand and cause mismatch basing there. So it's thymine dimer, excuse me, is what you might see there. Okay, so the repair of these mutations is essential to maintain the integrity of the DNA sequences so cells can survive. Um, the types of DNA repair pathways, there's base excision, there's direct repair, and there's nucleotide excision repair. So base excision goes along just a little bit and takes out the base that's wrong or has the affecting protein causing the issues there. Um, direct repair or light repair, which is a photochemical cleavage of a pyrimidine dimer. So it can just go in and go, oh no, there's this mutation, let's go ahead and pull it out. So it just pulls it right out. And there's also nucleotide excision repair, which pulls off the whole nucleotide and swaps it with another one. Okay, uh, nucleotide, just so we're aware, nucleotide excision repair is also known as dark repair, not, uh, not the light repair in terms of the simpleness of it. Um, examples of the nucleotide excision repair. So specialized enzymes remove the nucleotide adjacent to an incorrect pairing. The correct nucleotides are filled back in by, D by DNA polymerase and DNA ligase acting in their usual capacities. So say it sees some sort of mutation, any type, doesn't really matter what type. The excision of the 12 nucleotide by UVR ABC ex exonuclease, exonuclease, just to make sure, which comes in and cuts out the wrong section. So then DNA synthesis continues regularly by DNA uh, polymerase 1, and then it's joined together back by DNA ligase, uh, just like you'd see in a normal replicating DNA cell. Okay, so, so excuse me. So the, uh, the mutagenic capacity of compounds it can actually be determined by their effect on bacteria in the Ames test. So Salmonella tip, uh, tiferia, tip, tif, tifimerium strain A cannot grow without a histidine due to a particular mutation. In the absence of the histidine, a few colonies revert back to the non-mutated form and can grow even in the absence of histidine. Uh, this happens more frequently in the presence of compounds that promote mutagenesis. So basically it means um, areas of the cell, or um, at least on this growth plate, uh, growth on the histidine-free media in the absence of exogenous chemicals. So there's no bad chemicals here that cause reversion and growth, or just a few. There's not enough to be quantifiable. Now. On this histidine-free media, the presence of chemicals that promote mutagenesis, you do see quite a lot of growth there in the cell. So it's a good way to test the mutagenic capacity of a compound. Okay, uh, so mutation can also be a therapeutic strategy. Um, cancer drug cisplatin forms DNA adducts. Uh, adducts prevent the transcription and translation from occurring. Um, basically creating a little, it's called a, it's called a cisplatin, well, cisplatin is what it is, and it goes in and reacts with the DNA chain, stopping the, uh, on the seven, 
on the guanines in seven position. Um, it goes in and binds there and prevents further replication. Transcription is inhibited, so it slows the cell down, causes need, creates a need for DNA repair, and then eventually could lead to a cell death. So the H2O replaces the uh, chlorine. Chlorine? Uh, all right, all right. <laughs> To create a reactive species, which the DNA, which forms DNA cross links that disrupt, uh, disrupt the cell division, um, resistance by decreasing uh, drug accumulation enhanced DNA repair. Okay, and we're gonna end with. Let me move this up a little. Excuse me. Oh, screw that up. Okay, well, you can see all you need to see there anyway. Um, genetic variability, so that's just something we just want to touch on. The polymorphism, which is a differing nucleotide in greater than 1% of the population, can be neutral, advantageous, or delirious, a deleterious. Um, analysis of genetic differences, uh, sometimes useful in dosing, personalized medicine. Um, some people can clear a type of drug faster than others, just depending on their body types. Um, it's useful for uh, genotyping people. Um, one major one you might see is uh, sickle cell anemia among, uh, commonly among African American populations. Um, this is genetically advantageous as it prevents them from getting malaria. Unfortunately it's disadvantageous as it can cause platelet uh, blocking in the cell and eventually can lead to all sorts of heart issues and things along that nature. Um, anyway, that covers DNA replication, recombination, and repair. Thanks.